history from Revelation 2 and 3. And today we look at the church at Sardis, which means those escaping. And we look at the period of history of the church called the Reformation. Before we read chapter 3, 1 through 6, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, help us as we try to live our lives for You. We pray that we may not assume too much. We pray that we may not compare ourselves among ourselves, that we may not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. May we be careful to check and see if we match the admonitions of the Word of God. And Lord, in all that we do, Lord, help our work to be complete with You. Help us to be faithful to You today, we pray. Produce that faithfulness in our life through the One who said He was faithful and true. And Lord, help us as we look into this church age today to learn the lessons You want us to learn. For it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Let me ask you something today. Are you faithful to the Lord? And maybe that issue is determined in an area of our our life, our body. When the Bible speaks about the heart, it's not talking about the organ that pumps the blood through our body, but it's, it's talking about the center of our being, and especially our spiritual being. I think it's talking about an area in our brain where the decisions of life are made. I have often said that I believe in our heart there is a special room and in that room is a throne and whoever sits on the throne of our heart rules our life. Jeremiah said that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked and who can know it? I really think that the view of this age is only one that maybe God knew. I certainly wouldn't have characterized the way Christ did here. You know, it, it was a time when out of the darkness of the era and false teaching of Roman Catholicism came a new and fresh and renewal back to some of the principles of the Word of God. And Christ recognizes this here in verse 4, I think, when He said, there are a few names in Sardis who have not denied, have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. And the criticism that He has for this age would not go to all that were in it. And I don't know exactly who in this age would be classified that way and who would not. Maybe... Only God knows which of the reformers would be considered faithful and which would not. But God knew something about them that almost everybody else did not know. And we find it here. I find something else very curious too about the way that Christ presents Himself in, in 3.1. And in almost every other church, the, the things that are said about Christ are almost exclusively the picture from, from chapter 1. And, and the phrase here about the stars is taken, that He has the seven stars, is taken from chapter 1. But the seven spirits before the throne of God appear in, in chapter 4, verse 5. And we find that these are seven lamps before the throne of God and, and I believe they represent the complete person of the Holy Spirit before 
and in the presence of, of the throne room of God. And Christ said here that, that presented himself as, as having the spirit, the sevenfold spirits before the throne of God. What this era, age, needed was the aid and help of the Holy Spirit. What they needed was to see themselves as they really were. And evidently they did not. And perhaps we have not viewed them as they really were. And what is said here is striking. And when I read about this era, I ask myself, can God say about me too that my work is not perfect or complete before Him? Could He say about me that sometimes I might not have been faithful in my Christian life over a long period of time. Faithfulness is a very valuable and important thing. And so I think the Lord wants to say to us through His advice here to the church at Sardis that we must be faithful to our Lord. And He tells us some ways that we can do that. And so we want to read the passage and we want to look at the ways that Christ tells us that we can be faithful unto Him. And to the angel or pastor of the church in Sardis write, These things saith He who hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest and are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which will remain, which are ready to die, for I have not found thy work perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If thou, therefore thou will not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I come upon thee. Thou hast a few names in, even in Sardis that have not defiled their garments and they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment and I will not blot his name out of the book of life but I will confess him before my father and before my angels. He that hath an ear to hear let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Do you want to be faithful to your Lord? Then you need to let the Lord give you real character. And the Lord said to this church, I'm the one that have the seven spirits before the throne of God and the seven stars are in my hand. And here is a mixture of help for the Christian in faithfulness. The Holy Spirit which lives within our heart that magnifies the person and work and character of the Son of God when He lives through us and we trust Him and look into His Word and yield to His will. God's help, the seven spirits of God, which I believe represents the Holy Spirit. And then seven pastors that represent the leaders and teachers and, and workers that God has put uh, over us and to help us and to guide us. God has given us help in this matter of faithfulness. And Jesus Christ lives within our heart. You see, they had a reputation. And their reputation was that they were doing the will of God, that they were alive, that they had come out of the darkness of the Catholic system, and that they had all the answers for the days ahead. They were reformers. And they had a reputation that they were living and pleasing God. But Christ said, that's your reputation, but I know that you're dead. I know it's not so. I would not have seen it 
You could name a list of five or ten giants that, that lived in, in, in this age, Luther and Zwingli and Calvin and, and Husk and Wycliffe, and some of them were martyred, and, and all of them suffered because they had things that they said the Word of God says that we haven't been doing, and, and we've been living in darkness, and we need to live in the light. And they were right about a lot of things that they said. But God says that the characteristic of this age was it was only reputation and not character. There is something that Paul says in the New Testament that has helped me a lot, I think, in this area. He says, though I do not know anything against myself, I am therefore not clear of any judgment because I don't see it in my life. He said, He that judgeth me is the Lord. Only the Lord can really evaluate a human heart correctly. Only the Spirit of God can shine light and understanding upon any spiritual situation. We do not have the wisdom. We do not have the character to evaluate our lives. And sometimes we might sincerely think that we are important to God when we are not and we are dead. Reputation in this day may be the thing. Oh, it's not. It's what people assume you are, you see. It's their perception of truth that seems to matter in our world. But it's not what matters in God's world. And sometimes people may not know what's really going on in any human heart. Only God can see some things. Someone said is that if there was a wind in my heart, I'd pray to God for curtains. You better let the Lord be your character. You, let, you better let Him be your strength. It better be more than reputation. And, and of course, a, uh, a great man, I think Abraham Lincoln said, that you can fool uh, some of the people some of the time. And I might say you may fool all the people all the time, but you can't fool God any of the time. Reputation's not enough. It doesn't matter where you're a leader in the church, where you uh, 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 serve and minister or not. It doesn't matter what you've done and not done. Judas went out with them and did everything they did. None of them suspected him at all. They trusted him with the treasure, the money, and he was a thief. And he betrayed our Lord and never knew him. Never knew him at all. It better be character. People may think you're good and pat you on the back and tell you what a wonderful Christian you are and, and, and that's okay. But if it's not reality, it's not okay. The character of Jesus must be in our hearts if there is to be faithfulness. Oh, how we need, how we need the life of Jesus in Christians' lives in the day in which we live. If we're going to be faithful unto the Lord, we need the character of the Lord. And we also need to remember the blessing of the Lord. And here Christ says to them, I know your character that it's just reputation. You're dead and, and your work is not, uh, I've not found it complete or, or perfect before me. There's some things lacking in this age in your lives. And he said, remember therefore what thou hast received and heard. Remember the blessing of the Lord. I cannot evaluate Martin Luther's life God will do that. Seeming good to me, He did some marvelous things. Crawling up the steps in Wittenberg, He realized 
that all his efforts to atone for his sin, all the punishment he could heap upon himself for his guilt, could not take away sin that it was by faith that men were justified. What a marvelous truth. And Luther started out in his Reformation saying, we're not going to, we're going to do what the Word of God tells us to do. But time changed Luther. And someone has said that when Luther moved out of the Catholic Church, he took a lot of the furniture with him. You know, he did, he, he, he understood that you're saved by faith and not by works. But he still held to some of the sacraments that are not biblical that the Catholic Church held to. He still held to some of their heirs in position. And Luther started out saying, we're going to do what the Word of God tells us to do. But because there was pressure and because his life was threatened and because men hunted him and accused him and attacked him, he ended up in the end of his ministry saying, we're not going to do anything the Bible tells us not to do. That sounds like the same, but there's a world of difference between those two views. Time changes a lot of us. And sometimes not for the better. But one thing that we can do if time does change us, one thing we can do if if without realizing we take the wrong road and find ourselves a long way from the Lord, our work not being perfect, the Spirit of God not directing our life, we can remember the Lord in His truth and repent. And the advice of remembering what you've heard and received and know from the Lord emphasizes to me how important fellowship is. I think it's the key to the Christian life. I think it's the thing that causes us to understand the presence of Christ manifested in our life. And if daily you are coming into the presence of the Lord Jesus and being cleansed and being aware of your sinfulness and being changed and motivated to do His will and directed by the Spirit of God. And His presence does so many things that are wonderful in our life. It gives us peace and joy and direction and power. If we're daily in its presence, it's harder to forget. It's harder to forget the Lord if you meet Him every day. If you meet Him two or three times a day and He's there and you sense His presence and His will and He's working in your life, your heart's warm. And so I would say if there's not been a lot of fellowship in your life with Jesus the last five years, it may be that you've gone a long, long way from the Lord's will in your life. And maybe you're doing the same things that any Christian does. And so I would say to you that maybe you need to remember the Lord and His blessings in your life, His presence, and what He wants. Faithfulness, it depends upon the character of Christ. It's not something that we can produce through the effort of ourselves. And if we find ourselves unfaithful as Christ characterized this age. We need to remember the things we have heard and received and grab a hold of what we have and repent and hold fast. And then finally, we need to repent of our present sin. And here the Lord said to them, that the thing that they needed to do was to watch and be careful. He said, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I'm going to come on as a thief and you don't know when a thief's going to break in your house 
when he's coming. And this is the kind of language that is a reference to the coming of the Lord. And it may be here, but he said, you better watch. If you don't watch, you can't stay faithful. You can't remember that which is the blessing of the Lord and hold fast to it. You better watch. You better be on guard. I think of the disciples there in the garden, Peter, James, and John, the best disciples that Christ had. And, of course, this was before Pentecost, and they were human beings like me and you, and they didn't understand all that was very little that was happening about the cross. Uh, they didn't understand why Christ had to go and die, and they were there in the garden. And Christ asked them to watch Him pray, and He came back and found them asleep. I fear that too often we are just asleep. We do not see the things that God has put before us. We do not see the opportunities. The Reformation, what an opportunity. What a wonderful thing to, to find truth after error had so long controlled the church. How wonderful to understand the real way that people are saved and the real importance of the Scripture. And get back to doing what God wanted done instead of what Satan wanted done. What an opportunity they had. But some of them evidently did not watch. Some of them did not guard the things. And maybe it's been a long time for you. And the Lord would, might be saying to you today, Turn back to me. Repent. Turn back to me. How long has it been since you've been faithful? And if you find yourself having the Spirit of God shine the light upon your heart, knowing that you have failed the Lord and you have went your own way, I say to you today, Remember the things that thou hast received and repent. Turn back. Turn back to the Lord. Come back to Him. Today, what an opportunity you have. How the Lord loves us. He washes away our sins. And even for disobedient, unfaithful children. At the judgment seat of Christ, when that is reckoned with, and that will be no picnic. It will be no easy thing. I often tell my children, I pray that it will be a private session between me and God. I do not know for sure what God will say about my life. I'll have to wait to hear His assessment and His judgment about some things. It's possible that I have been wrong when I have thought that I was right. And even in this life, when we are not faithful, 2 Timothy 2.13 tells us that our Lord is faithful. And what must we do when we sin? 1 John 1.9 If we tell God, what we've done wrong. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. O oh, child of God, keep short accounts with your Lord, I pray, and be faithful unto Him. Amen.